somebody walk away from this altar knowing that your prayers are answered. God hears you. He sees you. Yes. He cares. Hey, man, let's give God some praise in this house. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time, y'all. Namaste, St. Paul. How y'all feeling today? Amen. If you got somebody new sitting next to you, let them know that we said growing in the power of the resurrected Christ. I see some people mumbling. <laughs> but we are growing in the power of the resurrected Christ. If you would, please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 68 through 79. Luke chapter 1. Verses 68 to 79. I'm going to be reading from the NRSV version. And it reads, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, yes. for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. God's word for God's people. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, this is your word and this is your moment. I pray right now that you would just fill me with your spirit, Lord, and then empty me, Lord. So bless him, Lord. Lord. Bless your word. Lord. Speak to him and through him, God. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Have your way. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Today I would like to uh, speak to you from the subject, When God Shows Up. When God Shows Up. All right. As we continue our celebration of the season of Advent, wherein we commemorate the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as well as a time of anticipation of Jesus' eventual return and the ultimate fulfillment of the kingdom of God. And this year, we are focused on the songs of the Gospels. Now, I'm not talking about gospel music. I'm talking about the songs in the Gospel. All right. You see, in the Gospel of Luke, there are five songs, four of which have been recorded in classical music as well as in modern music, and they all have uh, titles in Latin, except for the first song, Elizabeth's song, Bestowing the Blessing Upon Mary, which is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. Three of these songs are right in the first chapter of Luke, and the other two songs are in the second chapter. Mary's song that we focused on last week is known as the Magnificat, and as we explored this song, we discovered that this song was a song of liberation and pride, a song of prophecy and praise from a poor teenage peasant girl who was chosen out of obscurity to be the mother of our Lord. The songs in chapter 2 are the songs of the shepherds and the heavenly host of angels beginning in chapter 2, verse 8. That song is known as the Gloria. And Simeon's song, known as the Nunc Dimittis, is found in Luke 2.22. See, all these songs have been given these Latin names and have been a part of certain liturgies and churches for centuries. Interestingly, the song that we're looking at today, the song of Zechariah, which is known as the Benedictus, and this is the song that we will focus on today. All right. And you might be asking, preacher, what's the significance of these songs and why is it important that we understand them? Well, I'm glad you asked because the first reason we need to know is because these songs represent what was in the hearts and minds of these unremarkable, unusual people whom God, in God's infinite wisdom, 
chose out of nowhere to be integral characters in the greatest story ever told. And these songs allow us to see what happens when God shows up in their lives, changes their story. What happens when their eyes are open to the fact that God has decided in his merciful grace to choose them to play vital roles in the story of the coming of the Savior of the world, the incarnation of hope, the Messiah, the only begotten of the Father, the monogonist, the Word made flesh. I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. Just think about it. All these songs show us the life-changing power of the Holy Spirit and what happens when anyone has a true close encounter with God. And before I go any further, let me just poll the congregation and ask. Have you ever been praying about something so long that it just became ritual and you kept praying but almost stopped believing it would happen? And then out of nowhere, God showed up? Yeah. And when God showed up, sometimes you didn't even know how to deal with it, right? And you almost wind up squandering and blowing the very blessing you were praying about. And sometimes it's because we can't see beyond our doubts and fears, which can sometimes even block us from seeing the blessings that are right in front of our faces. Let me give you an example. I remember some years back, a friend of mine had bought a two-family house. She was ecstatic about the new house, and she couldn't wait to be a first-time homeowner. And when she finally moved in, she praised God as she moved into her brand new home. About a year later, we were talking, and she was telling me how she was struggling financially with the house. And that she was praying and asking God to bless her with some extra money so that she would be able to pay some overdue bills. And she started to worry that if things didn't improve soon, she might eventually lose her dream house. So as she told me this, I asked her why the rent her tenant was paying wasn't enough to help her offset the mortgage. And she said, well, actually, I haven't rented it out yet because I'm afraid of someone moving in and messing up my house. So if I get a bad tenant that doesn't want to pay their rent, and I don't want to wind up with a nightmare tenant, Lord. I can't get out of my house. So I've been kind of leery about renting it out. Lord, help us. So I said, well, let me ask you this. Didn't you tell me that it was God that got you that house in the first place? And she said, yes, he did. I said, okay. I said, well, if God was the one who got you the house, Come on, preacher. you trusted God and God delivered, then why would you trust, trust the fact that the same God that got you the house won't send you the right tenant? I said, I, I said, now I know why God is not answering your prayers for more money because God has already answered your prayers for a two-family house. God didn't give you a one-family house. God gave you a two-family house. And the only way you're going to get more money is to use the blessings that 